Right, now we're going to go over C1 and C2. They're special. Uh, here we have C1. This is called your atlas, and it's identifiable because of all the surfaces for articulation. And then we have your axis, which is identifiable by this our odontoid process. Your atlas and your axis allow your head to swivel and nod. All right, we're going to be going over all the structures on the spine here. Uh, just to start off, I'm going to count off all the vertebrae you have. You have seven cervical vertebrae, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. After that, you have 12 thoracic, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. And then you have five lumbar, one, two, three, four, five. And then your sacrum com is composed of five uh, fused vertebrae. Right, now we're going to go over the structures on each vertebrae. Starting with your vertebral body, you can see it here, here, and here. Uh, we, here we have a cervical vertebrae, a thoracic vertebrae, and a lumbar vertebrae, just to clarify. Uh, each vertebrae has a vertebral arch. I'm just going to show it here on the thoracic. It's this space right here. Uh, your vertebral arch is made up of a lamina and two pedicles. The pedicles are like the pedestals, which hold up the lamina, which is like a roof. Then the transverse processes, we have your transverse processes on the thoracic, right here and right here. On the cervical, we have the transverse processes here and here. And then on the lumbar, we have them here and here. Then going on to the spinous processes. Now the cervical vertebrae has a bifid spinous process, and that's going to be one way that you can identify uh, it as a cervical vertebrae. The thoracic vertebrae has a spinous process that slants down and this has a bifid. Thoracic vertebrae has a spinous process that slants down at a sharp angle. So you're going to be able to tell that it, it's you're going to be able to use that to identify it as a thoracic vertebrae. And then the lumbar vertebrae has a little bit smaller spinous process compared to its body. So that's going to be one way that you could tell it's a lumbar. Moving on. We have your superior facets for articulation. That's going to be where the other vertebrae are going to interact with that thoracic vertebrae. Then we're going to have your inferior facets for articulation, where it's going to interact with that with the vertebrae inferior to it. Uh, those are going to be found on all three types. Then we're going to have your intervertebral discs, which I'm going to grab this big spine back to show you. You can see all your intervertebral discs in between the vertebral bodies. And then we can see your intervertebral foramen shown right here. It's what these nerves are going through. So it's this little space right there. It goes transversely. And then we have your vertebral foramen. And that's just this large foramen right here that your spinal cord is going to go through. It's seen on all three. Now we're going to go over your sacrum. This is those five fused vertebrae that sit at the very inferior part of the spine. Uh, a couple of structures. We have the sacral canal, which is right here. Goes all the way through there. Then we have your sacral hiatus. That refers to the exit of that sacral canal. So it's just right here, the exit of that sacral canal. Then we have sacral foramina. All these little holes there on the side. Then we're going to have your auricular surface, so it's going to interact with that ilium. And then on the bottom, this one's broken off so you can't see it so well, but there's a coccyx and that's just your tailbone. It's four fused vertebrae at the end of the sacrum. Now we'll take a look at some ribs. Uh, in your body you have seven true ribs, you have five false ribs, and two of the false ribs are called floating ribs. Uh, more in depth look here. We'll look at um, this rib here. This structure that's going to be articulating with the vertebrae is going to be called the head. That's going to be that structure right there. Okay, And then if I flip this over, you can see a bump on the back side here. That's going to be called the tubercle. The tubercle is going to articulate with the transverse process of the vertebrae. Then, we will look at the body 
and that'll be just this whole long structure going out, um, making up most of the bone. And then on the very bottom of this rib, always pointing downward, will be that costal groove. And that's just a shallow depression and that goes down into a point on the very inferior side of the rib. Now we'll take a more in-depth look at the sternum. Um, the only things that you need to know on, uh, on this part of bone um, is going to be the manubrium, the body, that xiphoid process that's missing, and then up here, the sternal notch.